Did you know that 100 out of 100 people are suffering with subscriber phobia? So if you hit the subscribe button, you're cured! I've started recording every Mythic Plus key this season and in these episodes I'll go over the ups and downs of my journey towards getting that juicy sought after 0.1% title. Right back into another week of my plus and we're starting with a 27 way crest. We shroud past everything and go straight into the triad boss, no kissing or messing around. I do really love how they made it so all doors are open in this season for Waycrest because back in BFA it was mega RNG on how you would start the dungeon because of the doors. Back to the boss though, Triad was no issues and having a curse to spell makes Malady or Malady, whichever one you prefer, so much easier as you can just quickly move out and dispel yourself. We completely blasted this boss and absolutely gapped the rat and the rogue. We had a few deaths in the courtyard, but the pug breaker boss is here, Gades and Lentilman. I took stone skin totem as it does help reduce the damage of soul thorns and that is what we're going to wipe on because 99% of keys are bricked from that mechanic. But alas, it still wasn't enough to keep me alive when I got targeted. Thankfully though, I did have rain gone and after I came back alive, I did some incorporeal magic to stop us getting two stacks. That last second kick was mwah, chef's kiss. Casting hex though is a pain in the ass for incorporeal because quite often, I go to cast on it, just about to finish the cast, and someone instantly CCs the one I'm already casting on, so the other one goes off. And then the flip side of that, if I do wait to CC, no one does any CC and it just goes off anyway. I keep popping Stone Skin Tome and Ghost Wolf just trying to survive the thorns, but as we are one of the squishier classes in the game, if I end up getting targeted back to back, we are pretty doomed. We ultimately wipe at 21% after a few others go down to soul thorns. So not the best start to the week, but it is a rough boss to start. Now back to everyone's favorite dungeon, a 27 Galakrons fall. I swear I do have a keys guys, I promise. I definitely do not wake up in cold sweats at nighttime having nightmares about extinction blast or pizza slices. Moving on, we do a cheeky skip and blast a pack with the boss, no deaths there. We then easily clear out the area before timeways with only a couple of deaths. And now it's timeways. All goes well until about 20% where we go from everyone alive, no deaths on the boss, to a full wipe. Just like how timeways always goes. Just shows how little mistakes just brick this fight. So the spells come out, priest dies with desperate prayer still available, and then the paladin has a dispel and it gets dispelled in the slow zone, a classic. Takes him and the monk out. So we end up going again because we do wipe with Lust and thankfully Fall is super forgiving with the timer so it's not really an issue that we do it one more time. Again, we do really well up until the last 30%-ish. Me and the Priest get a Dispel. I'm first as always as we discussed beforehand and the Priest dies from my Dispel so then his triggers and that takes the Monk out again. We were super lucky with the Priest's trigger that it didn't actually go off because he was in the slow zone when he died. Fast forward, we used two CRs from the Paladin and then we lose the Paladin to the orbs a little later, but we killed the boss thankfully. Moving on, we clear everything up to Blight and on the boss itself, look at how much damage your boy was cranking. I think that might be my highest yet for that boss. Get diffed, meta slaves. Imagine if we had PI2, the possibilities would just be endless. Swiftly moving on, we go to Daddy Aridicron because he gives us a nice beating every time we get here. And we actually do it, Gadies and Lentilman. No 3 to 4, fall depletes in this episode. We phased him at a great time too as we just missed out on an extinction blast. Plus we had Lust coming up for the DPS check to break the shield. And honestly, I don't think we would have broken it because we had about two seconds left as we broke it. Shows how much you need to crank in that phase. We get a nice plus 10 points, huge numbers, which takes us to 3450, so halfway to 3.5k. And we top damned with zero PIs, huge pug. 
straight into another key at 27 Atal. This one goes sour pretty quickly. We go downstairs to Razan, pull the little dinos, blast lust, make quick work of that. Then we go back upstairs to the left hand side where you would normally lust on fortified weeks. This is where the cracks start to show. We nearly cleared a pack and the Confessor Mantle cast just goes off at about 1% HP, just really unlucky there. The DH did have his kick available, but he probably thought it was going to die like the rest of us. So we move out the circle and then we get twirled on by the Juggernauts and we end up getting a few deaths there. And it's a pretty much a similar story all the way up until Priestess with the rest of the packs, where we do end up bricking the key. Not normally what we wipe to on this boss, but we were just having issues with the adds just roaming around. Standard rule for this boss always is you kill the first ad and then you CC the next two. So we kill the first ad, no problem. And then the monk CCs the second ad with paralysis. And it looks like the priest clips the ad with halo, which is really unfortunate. And I hope that's what it was, because if he actually darted it, that is griefing. So we end up scrambling around and the boss fight just becomes messy. We lose the paladin on the second transfusion. I try my best to stop the ad from getting to a pool, but because the ad gets super close, the DH doesn't have faith in us to kill it, so he ends up just like grabbing the pool before the ad, which is understandable honestly because you don't want the ad to get it, but if he gets it or the ad gets it, it's already kind of messed up because we're missing a pool to drain the boss. We keep scrambling around on the boss fight and eventually the DH goes down and that's the end of the key. Instantly back into another 27 Atal and this one is over in 3 minutes. This may be the first time I have ever wiped Amrazan honestly and I probably could have left this out of the episode but I'm just going to showcase it anyway that it is in fact possible to wipe Amrazan. Ro goes down to aggro from the raptors which spawned and then the tank goes down with the bleed and melee hits and that's the key. Instantly back again into another 27 Atel. I really, really, really do apologize. Please don't leave. I am just a persistent person and this was the only key I could get into at the time. So I'm doing it in order of the keys I did throughout the week. But I do apologize. We go left with Lust again. Have a few deaths of Spiteful and Merciless Assault. Honestly, with this pack, you either choose your poison because... You stay and take spiteful hits when they die and they target you, or you run out and risk the chance of getting twirled on. Not fun either way. We take down Priestess, no issues after those packs, and then we head downstairs where we take the pack of four mobs and turn it into a really, really spicy pull by pulling two extra Sky Screamers and two packs of swords. I use my cap totem when they're stacked, but all three of us DPS go down very quickly into the pull because, to be honest, is an incredibly sketchy pull swords and people being stacked is a no-go because you just die like we do and the only way you're going to get away with this is if you have your cc super on point which we don't fast forward ahead we clear the rest of the trash count and then we also take out razan swiftly moving on we then also take out bart boy vocal which now has really started to hurt I have to kind of think about where I use my defensives on this fight because Noxious Stench hurts a lot and I do end up dipping low a couple of times on the fight. Then it's onto our new gatekeeper of Rio Gains, Yasma, who has completely taken the mantle from Eridicron. We do have so much time left for the last boss and it's a good job we do as we end up going down we end up having a wipe as the soul ring goes off at about 80%. It completely takes out the paladin and the healer. The healer did use dampen harm for racking pain just before. And I think he thought it was going to carry over to soul rend as it hit. But unfortunately his defensive ran out as it went off so he dies. The paladin as always though is saving his bubble for next dungeon. So we end up wiping... But we do have enough time and we have Lust coming up, so surely we'll get it this time, right? So, last attempt here for the boss. And on the very first soul rend, it goes tits up and the priest gets one tapped. So, I end up holding off on Lust because normally I send it after the soul rend and the adds die. So, I wait for him to be CR'd and then I blast Lust. 
Again though, later in the fight, another Soul Ren goes off, and we lose the healer. He did have his own Cocoon and Fort Brew, and you honestly cannot just take the Soul Ren raw, as you saw with the healer there and the priest earlier. I always at least myself try to get a few stacks of Spirit Wolf before it comes out, just to reduce the damage a bit. And then again, next Soul Ren, me and the priest go down. I did realize though, I could have lived if I wasn't a boomer, I could have surged myself straight away because I did have a few stacks. It was unfortunate I didn't have Earth Ellie up as I was up in about 5 seconds after I died. Just, yeah, annoying. But that does mark the end of the dungeon. Bloody Yasma man is just griefing my Rio gains. I cannot for the life of me get a 27 Atal done. Now we get into our second 28 key and it's a rise. Quite a butt clenching dungeon overall, not gonna lie. Lots of things which can kill you. We do this mega pull here with two of the mini bosses. We do the keeper and the maiden. I do find it quite difficult to blast here. I said it in the previous episode, but I think because we have so much consistent damage, uh, once the shield goes up, it's kind of hard to catch up because when we are sending cooldowns, some of the mobs are still in the shield. So you end up doing reduced damage most of the time. I tell you what though, this pull is sketchy and having not done it too many times it is so scary you've got like a gazillion cleaves going off swirlies to dodge on the floor cast a kick orbs to dodge from the maiden and on top of that we had spiteful spawning so the whole shebang we end up losing the priest straight away to the swirly quite troll honestly the paladin goes down to the orb twice i swear every time i come to this dungeon the paladin does go down to the orb but then again, he is cranking anyway, so forgiven. We have zero deaths on the boss, which I mean, I was very surprised about considering we're playing Shaman and it's a 28, tyrannical. We did have an orb go into the tower in the intermission, but thankfully we did kill the boss anyway. We bloodlust the double dragons after the gauntlet, where we definitely didn't hit countless orbs trying to get through it. We then clear up to Morchi, where the clones end up getting broken out throughout the fight. I did take Earth Grab Totem again because it is super handy, but it just ends up becoming really messy. People end up cleaving them accidentally or purposely, who knows at this point. Uh, we then get into the intermission. We all run around to try to get to the right Chromie, but instead of running to the right hand side where she was closer, we all run left because there's loads of stuff in the middle. And we get breathed on and die, and that is the end of the dungeon. We end up running the 27 after the 28, and it goes completely and utterly terrible. Here's a few of the lowlights, and definitely not highlights. <laughs> Again, me being who I am, decided let's go straight back into another rise, because I clearly have something wrong with me. This time on the 26, but it actually worked out. We do the standard bloodless pull, all goes well, no random deaths to orbs or a certain someone reincarning into ancient radiance. We blast down tier and then we move on to Morchi where we had our first death of the dungeon, which came in the intermission when Morchi was on 1% and it just incinerates our paladin. We then went straight over to Battlefield where your boy dies to aggro on the rip after pressing Lust. No. Apparently the mage who was playing with the tank said he was lagging, but why is it me who suffers, you know? We polish off the boss and then head to Deos, which goes into a clown fiesta, but also has an insane clutch from me in the tank. So all goes incredibly well. We've only got two deaths in the entire run so far. We get him into last phase, around 11% HP, and then that's where it starts going bad. We end up losing the Paladin to Swirlies, and then the Priest tries to MLG clutch it as he's got CR braces, but he can't quite reach him because the Paladin's still in the sand poop. He then himself goes down to the Swirlies, and we have zero way to res anyone, so it's up to us three. Eventually, because we don't have a healer, the Mage goes down, and it's left up to me and the tank. I can sustain myself with healing surges, but I now have to also deal with the orbs, incorporeal, 
and trying to finish the boss. We end up losing the mage at around 5%, so a quite a good amount to get through still, but your boy was not going to let another rise deplete. So I keep myself alive, we managed to finish the boss with 17 seconds left on the timer, and we were top damage overall. But we got a measly plus 3 for all of our efforts, but it's a bigger number, so win-win. We sent a Dark Heart Thicket 26. I do know the tank as I played with him before, and he is a pretty good player, so that did help us get an invite, and we definitely need those as Shaman, because we are struggling out here. We did funnel things on the first pull with Bloodless, we sent the bear to the Shadow Realm. We did have a couple of deaths later on to the Poison Debuffs from the Poisoners. I maybe could have taken Poison Cleansing Tome, but I've already taken Hex and it's quite hard to swap around our talents at the minute. We skip the Double Bear Brothers and then we start on the first boss. We do end up losing the healer. The Warlock was the one baiting, but because it's a melee healer, because it's a uh, Miss Weaver, he may have forgotten that when the boss jumps back, it is a cleave. And normally when I am doing this dungeon, someone always does die to that cleave because it is not as obvious. We kill Arc Druid, and then we start clearing this area with the Keepers and the Dryads. We end up having a couple of overdoses from the mushrooms, so we may end up having to go into rehab afterwards. Okar is a really great fight for us, and I love playing it. So many funnel targets constantly throughout it, so we can just perma blast. We have a clean fight up until the end, where he basically just gets fed up and just leaves us with a farewell gift and just annihilates two of us. This next part still cracks me up. I love any sort of meme deaths like this in my dungeons. It's not good for the timer, but for me personally, I just love watching stuff like this. So we start fighting the big elemental who does a charge. Yes, a charge. You can maybe see where I'm going with this. He winds up and he just absolutely bulldozes the monk and the warrior. I love it. We make quick work of the Dragon Boy, and then we go to Xavius with just about 4 minutes left on the timer, so it is definitely doable. I get the first Vestering Rip, and then straight after that he casts Nightmare Bolt. And I'm on around 80% HP, and it kills me. Honestly quite surprising, I did not think it would take me out. I didn't think I'd need to be on 100% to live that. Was completely my bad though, I should have used part of Hellstone but I thought it's probably better to save them for a later phase once his damage starts stacking up. As the fight goes on though, and as you're probably well aware, Xavius is one of those where it starts going kind of downhill around 20%, unless you play it cleanly, which is what happens to us. It does go downhill. We lose the warrior to a swirly, and then he gets CR'd by the lock, who then trades his place and also gets hit by a swirly. We then get Nightmare Bolted again when he's on 10 stacks, so you can already imagine, and I already knew my fate, I even said it on stream, I was like, this is 100% going to kill me if he cast Nightmare Bolt, which he did, of course. The rest of the group fights on, but unfortunately, we end up missing the timer by about 3 seconds, and that is the dungeon. After that, we go into a 27 throne, and this dungeon, I am quite aware that my life can be taken from me at any point with these bosses, so I was a little bit scared going into it, especially the third boss. As always though, we go big at the start, and the other classes get to enjoy playing No Target Cat Simulator, which we personally do not have the DLC for yet. Cries and Shaman. We cleared a Ravager afterwards and a tunnel upstairs, and then we have a full wipe because the tank pulls a Doggo pack and another pack, and gets all the melees in the back and dies. We clear the rest of the room and start on Little Lady Najatar. We do this strategy here where we all spread out on the markers for Focus Tempest. I know the premise of the strategy and what's happening, but if anyone can give me a detailed explanation of it in the comments, Thank you to that beautiful person who does comment it. We lost a priest to Focus Tempest, and then as soon as we hit the first intermission, everything which could go wrong does, and that's the key bricked. Right, we do end up doing one more Atal for the week, but I will make it short and sweet because we've definitely seen enough Atal this week. It was a four-man pre-made with the old voice chat symbol in the LFG. 
So I did have some good hopes for this key because normally you want to play with people who are communicating. Thankfully no racist or questionable individuals once I did join the call. After that, we start the dungeon. We had double shaman, so we had perma up time on Razon because of double tremor totem. We went there first. We lost our pal and friend to the pursuit because he was a little greedy boy and got numbed. Nothing of note really happens other than that. And then a couple of deaths to the paladin just throughout the dungeon to random things like poison pools and vocal and aggro. Then it's back to our beloved Yasma, who always treats us fairly. Throughout this fight, I think the healer was struggling a little bit to keep us top back up after we had soul rend. We do end up losing the paladin a number of times to racking pain because he wasn't topped. But then again, he also didn't heal himself, so it was kind of both of their fault, really. A little bit later, the healer dies to a spider, and we have three different souls in three different places because we all went to a different spot. So we get two stacks of the ads going into the boss, and we wipe, and that's the key. Last two keys of the week, and we're back into a 27 Everbloom. We go big at the start, as always, and we cry in target cap. But I'm glad the Rep Paladin and the Warrior get to live their life happily. A few casts go off back to back on us and the Abomination cast goes off at the same time so we end up falling over in our cooldowns and in lust, gotta love it. I end up reincarning and fighting for my life a few times here with Spiteful and the Berserkers charging out. We then fast forward though through the rest clearing up to Witherbark and making quick work of him. Your boy managed to get nearly 100 million damage on Witherbark just through funneling. It's probably the best boss fight this season for enhancement and I'd quite happily have another one like this next season. We do another big pull and we are trying our best to keep up with the rep Harden, which I think we do pretty good with. I'd also realized that the warrior had switched to fury from arms so I can imagine because the target counts are a bit less now it makes sense and he gets way more pump at the start with arms and it kind of gives me an idea for myself where we could potentially go a build where we go Doom Winds and Nova just for more uncapped potential, just for the first few pulls, but I'll have a think over. I might try it in my next Ever Bloom. We then go to Council where we end up having a few deaths. I was on Revitalized Duty on Gola, so I always send a few kicks early into Tilu just before Gola becomes active later. We end up losing the Priest. Bolts go off on him a few times, but we get him CR'd. And then I end up getting the most random death ever. I've never actually seen this happen before in Everbloom. So they end up finishing the cast of Torrential Fury. And then as he finishes it, I get meleeed before he starts going into bolt mode. I couldn't actually believe it. I was so stunned when it happened. I was like, what the hell just killed me? I thought maybe the DH had melded or something for the charge, but... I think it was just one of those things where there was that split second of he wasn't casting something so he just meleeed the closest person. So next time I'll make sure that I'll stand away from him. Thankfully though the rest of the group does kill it. Uh, with the lack of kicks though we end up losing the healer but we do kill it. This next part is where the key does get bricked and if you have any insight into what happened or why this happened I would love to know because I'm still dumbfounded on how it actually happened. We cleared the packs up until the spicy triple mage pull with the arcane frost and fire mage. We start the pull and the priest is in range as you can see on the minimap just so we can bait the arcane orb. And as soon as the arcane mage casts spatial disruption, which is meant to go in range, it lands slap bang and melee and completely nukes the rep paladin and the warrior. I have no idea how I didn't get clipped but I'm still confused as to why when a melee, as you can see on the minimap, the priest is at ranged. From then on, the tank tries to kind of save the pull and bring the pack back to us, but it becomes super messy and we end up getting a load of more deaths trying to figure it out. And that is the dungeon. On to our last key for the episode and we're playing with some pumpers. We make quick work of everything up until the first boss, but we have a good amount of deaths. One from me getting aggro in the intermission somehow. I end up getting melees by the guard. I think I sent up one of my chain lightnings when they're all kind of stacked and one of them hits the guard even though I wasn't targeting him and he'd already lost some HP but for some reason he just decided he didn't like me and was probably just a racist naga. So yeah, I end up dying. We then lose the paladin to a swirly. 
And then right at the end of the fight, we lose the Hunter to Shock Blast. And then me and the Paladin get zapped as the boss dies. Nice little 10 seconds added to the timer. Thank you, lady. Throughout the rest of the dungeon, we only have a few random deaths. We then get to the Gauntlet area. And this pack here we're going to skip is quite a nasty one. They all hit pretty hard. And to make matters worse, they just jump around like crazy. Throwing off random spears, nearly one-shotting you. So it's definitely worth skipping this pack if you can. So the DH places his fear sigil and then he passes first and then we all pass with him. And then once we're in a good spot, he then melds the combat off. So we can uh, successfully skip that pack. If you were to go first instead of the DH, you'd get in combat. So unless you have a way of dropping combat, we're pretty screwed. So always make sure that the person who is doing it, say like a hunter or a demon hunter, they go first. We clear the gauntlet pretty easily and we do our funnel thing as always on the sentinels. We get the last boss down with ease two, no deaths there. And then that throne gives us an okay-ish amount of score, plus four, which takes us to three, four, five, eight. Quite a few depletes this week, but at least we gained some score. Hope you all enjoyed my journey this week and got a kick out of my depletes. If you did, then give it a like and subscribe, otherwise my depleteness will spread to you. Quick shout out to the Patreon homies, really appreciate the support you give this channel, and big thanks to everyone else. Take it easy, see you next time.